Hi guys, and welcome back to another IbraCorp video. Really appreciate you guys coming and checking out today's video. This is the next episode in our series on starting a business based on open source products. And in this episode, we're looking at setting up some little advanced networking, uh, which involves PFSense and OpenSense as well. This will work hand in hand with our last episode where we've shown you now the setup of Proxmox and getting ready to get our business server up and running. Now, it's worth noting that it's not as central for you to necessarily have to use PFSense or OpenSense, whatever you prefer. We'll go through all that stuff in the video and you can make your mind up whether it's something you wanna use. But we're gonna show you anyway because we do highly recommend you guys look at some advanced firewalls. But at the same time, this will actually make your life easier when handling Proxmox uh, because we want the firewall to be something independent at times and that can make things a lot easier to manage. Also a big thank you to Brian from the Awesome Open Source channel. Thank you for covering me this week for this video. I was absent due to some family issues and just needed some time off. Make sure you check out the content from both our channels. If you're interested, links in the description. There's plenty of content there. I think all of you guys will really enjoy. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. With all that said, let's just jump into the video where Brian will now show us PFSense and OpenSense on our home lab and see how we can get going with some advanced networking. It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're continuing our building a business on open source series. Now today I wanted to talk about some networking because the first video that Ibercorp and I did was really about setting up the backbone of our infrastructure and in that case we're using a server and we're running Proxmox on it. Now Proxmox is terrific for several reasons. I've looked at some other open source virtualization servers and there's some really great stuff out there. So there is XCPNG with uh, Zen Orchestra on top of it. That's awesome. It's a really amazing system, but it doesn't support LX containers out of the box. Now you could do that on a VM that you set up inside of there, but now you're setting up a VM to set up virtual machines on top of, and it just kind of continues. So in order to get the best performance, we're really going to use the Proxmox layer with LXC on top of it, or we're going to use the Proxmox layer with a VM on top of it, but today, building on that momentum of having Proxmox as our backbone for our infrastructure, our server, our starting place of where we're going to build our business. And really take this as, I'm not trying to jump out and build a 700 person company day one. I'm starting off and it's me and maybe me and two other people, you know, a small group of people trying to accomplish something. And we expect that the company will grow over time and we can grow our infrastructure with it. We just need to plan ahead. It is so vital that we plan ahead for what we wanna do in the long run. So today I'm gonna to cover two things. I'm gonna cover installing PFSense and just getting it up and running at the basic level because we will add VPNs and we will add VLANs and we will add all kinds of things to it as we go along in the series and as those things become necessary. Again, planning ahead is really important. So we know that we wanna do those things but first step is just get it installed and get it to where you can use it. Now I'm going to cover both PFSense and OpenSense today because I know you guys are kind of split on which one is better. I have used both for my purposes as a home user who just wants a little bit of extra control. They have both been terrific tools. They are both incredible tools. There's just not enough difference for me to be able to say one is better than the other. The only thing I can say for sure is that OpenSense definitely gets updates much more often much more frequently and that's because that's how their model kind of works they give you updates much more frequently now pfsense will give you security updates if you need them but as far as like new features and new rollouts that's a very timed thing and they do it on a very um i guess gradual pace it is definitely not the same the same fast pace that OpenSense does so with OpenSense you get a lot more updates but that also leaves room for breakage so you got to be a little bit careful about that again planning ahead making sure you've got good backups in case something goes wrong and then you can pull that system back up to the way it was right before you did the the upgrade things like that are really important okay all of that said we're going to jump into the install right after this all right, first thing you want to do is actually get a copy of PFSense or OpenSense. Now, for our purposes, we're going to start with the open source version. That's fine. They have other options where you can definitely pay. You can go and buy an appliance from PFSense if you want to from NetGate. Really great software, really great hardware working together. That makes it really an amazing product. So definitely get over there and check out their products as well. We're going to move over here to the download link. We're just going to click. It's going to bring you to this page. And it's going to take the latest stable version in the community edition. 
So down here is 260. You're just going to hit on select right here for the architecture. You need to pick whether it's a NetGate ADI or AMD 64-bit. Now this is expecting AMD 64-bit. There is not an ARM version for PFSense. Next thing you want to do is get the type of installer you want. So if you're, if you're going to install this like I am on Proxmox, you're probably going to want to get the DVD ISO installer. If you're going to put it on USB stick and then use that to boot up some hardware, and I'll show you a couple of different things that we could use it on, you'd get this one. So just kind of know what you're going to be putting it on ahead of time and then click on the one you want. And then pick a place that's close to you and click on the download button. That's going to start downloading the image that you need and then just let it finish. Now we're going to jump over to OpenSense. It's the same exact process. Same thing. We're going to go up here to the download in the upper menu. We're going to click. We're just going to move down here and you're going to again pick your architecture. They've got it defaulted to AMD 64. That's really the only architecture type they're giving me. Now VGA is a little bit confusing, <laughs> but if you're going to do this off of like a USB memory stick, I think the VGA is the one you want. If you're going to do this off of a DVD where it's an ISO, you're going to pick DVD. If you're going to try to do it through a serial port, you'd do that. So you have a few different options here, but so just remember VGA if you're going to do a USB memory stick or DVD if you're going to do this on Proxmox like we are today. Pick your mirror location. So again, pick a place that's close to you. So this one kind of picked one that's not too close to me. So I'd go here and pick something like Lease Web East Coast. And then again, click download and it's going to start downloading that ISO file that you need. Now I've already got these downloaded and set up, but once you get them downloaded, you can go into Proxmox and we'll go into Proxmox right here. And if you set up Proxmox the way that we did last week, what you're going to find is that if you expand your, your node, you should have a, a volume that says local. If you didn't set up a special folder to store your ISO images or your CT images, your container images, then you're going to have this kind of local drive and you're going to click over here and you'll see ISOs. Now mine's empty right now, but that's because I've set up a special folder. It doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you have room to hold the ISOs that you're going to be building from. That's the only thing. So if you start seeing like I've got 30 ISOs in here and I'm running out of drive space, go and get rid of some of the ISOs that you don't actually need anymore. If you've done the install and you're not going to install it again, you're just going to use backups of the one you did. Just get rid of those ISOs. That'll, that'll free up room. It's not a big deal. But for us, I'm going to go to my ISOs collection here. Here you can see I've got all my ISO images. So some things that we're going to be working on later, some things that we're going to be working on today. But right here you can see I've got PFSense. And then right up here I've got OpenSense. So we're just going to do these installs today. So if you don't have them there yet, if you're on this local and you go to your ISO images and there's nothing there, you just do upload and then go select that file from your local machine and then upload it. It's really simple. It's going to upload right to here. You'll see it when it finishes and do the same thing with your uh, OpenSense ISO as well. Just make sure they're both uploaded right to where you need them here on the ISOs area. And then when you're ready, you're going to go back up to your node. Now you can do this several ways. You can right click here and say create VM. You're going to want that first option that says create VM. Or you can go over here and click this button at the top that says create VM. Just click on that button. It's going to come up and start asking you for some information now. So I'm going to start at 130. I haven't used 130 in the past. I'm going to call this PF Sense. Really simple. I don't have to do anything else on this screen. I'm just going to click next. The second screen wants to know where do I get this ISO from? So it automatically picks CT images because it's the first thing in the list. I'm just going to switch that to my ISOs file. I'm going to drop this down and I'm just going to go down and find PFSense in the list. And I'm going to click it. We're going to leave it as Linux and just leave it on the 5.4 kernel and click on next. Now once you get to the graphics screen, we're just going to leave this alone. We don't need to change anything here. So we can just click on next. Now it wants to know where do you want to put this thing. So hopefully you've got your storage already set up. If you watched our first episode about installing Proxmox, you'll have heard the part where I said, make sure you have your storage in place before you install Proxmox. It just makes it easier because Proxmox just finds that storage that's in place when you're doing the install. So I'm going to go and pick a different location because CT images is where I store my container images. ISOs is where I can store my ISOs. So as I go down the list here, I can see different places where I have storage. And I know that some of the storage is SSD and some of the storage is regular spinning drive. So I want to use something that's an SSD. And in this case, I've named them so it's easy to find. So I've got one called VMs and I've got one called VM clones. Now, I don't really use VM clones for the clones right now, but I will in the future. So right now, I'm just going to start with VMs. 
And then you can see here that it allocates a little bit of space. I'm gonna set this to 40. I don't think there's anything else that we need to do here. So just click next. Now here they wanna know how many cores and how many sockets do you wanna use? So my, my server has two sockets, so two different CPUs, and then it has 12 cores per CPU, which is really 24 threads. So it sees that as 24 cores per CPU. I don't need all of that for PFSense to run. So I'm just gonna give it four cores. Now, kind of, you can run this on two cores with two gigs of RAM, I think. You don't have to have four cores. Just do what makes sense for the hardware that you have. I'm gonna give it four cores because I've got enough space to do that. Now, all this stuff, if you don't see this, it's because I have the advanced checkbox checked. If you, if you uncheck it, this is what it looks like. So this may be what you're seeing. But if you just check the advanced checkbox, you'd see all this stuff down below. There's nothing that we need to change on this screen from the advanced checkbox. So just set your cores and click next. Now it wants to know how we want to allocate memory. So remember I said it could use two gigs. You could just leave it at two gigs. I'm going to do 4096. That's four gigs. And then I'm going to click on next. The next thing it wants to know is our network setup. Now, this is the reason we're installing PFSense. So you need to understand what you have for network hardware on the server if you're gonna run this on Proxmox. So I'm gonna uncheck this because I actually have, so this is the back of my server. And if you look right here, it says 10 gigabit. These two ports are 10 gigabit ports. Now this is my, my bridge, my, my actual internet coming in right now. But then you can see these are one gigabit. So I've got two 10 gigabit ports and two one gigabit ports on the back of this server that I can choose from to actually set up Proxmox. So what are actually set up PFSense. So what I'm going to do is set up these two ports for PFSense. And I'll use the same two ports for the OpenSense install just so you can see what we're going to do to set those up. And then you just need to figure out which one is which. Now, when we set up the WAN and the LAN, I'll show you in the interface, you can just switch the ports if you get them set wrong you can just switch the wires literally because these are so close but if you're setting this up on other hardware it may may make a difference on how you set it up the other hardware that i have that i'm going to run this on is actually an hp um, thing that i bought online it was pretty cheap and it's it comes with a four port one gigabit each each one of these is one gigabit and then i've got this one up here that's built in that's a one gigabit so i've got this card plus this one so i've got five ports here so i can use one for the wan and one for the lan or i can have multiple lans i can set up separate vlans off these different ports if i want to so there's a lot of options you can do with this little kind of mini sized uh, hp box so i've got actually two pieces of hardware and it depends on what you're running as to how you'll do it but just know what you have for your network hardware and how you want to run that. And that'll really help you out in the long run. All right, so we're going to say no network on the Proxmox install for now. We're going to click on next. So we're just going to double check that everything here looks good. And if it does, you're just going to click on finish. And it's going to go ahead and allocate that space and kind of create that starting virtual machine for us. And if you look, we have 130 right here. That's PFSense. Now, before we start it, we're going to click on it. We're gonna click over here on the hardware section and we're gonna kind of check out the hardware section. You'll notice we don't have any network stuff here. That's because we didn't create any. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on add. And now my network card in this, in this server is a PCI e PCI Express card. So I'm gonna go down here to PCI. I'm gonna click on it. Now I'm gonna expand this drop down, and this is gonna show me all of my PCI devices. Let me, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys on the, on the mobile devices. If I scroll down, I'm gonna see here's one that says ethernet controller 10 gigabit, ethernet controller 10 gigabit, and then it's gonna have a, a blank space, and then I have my two one gigabit ethernet controllers. So these are the ones that I wanna allocate, so I'm gonna click on this first one in the list, and then I'm just gonna let it kind of be there, and I'm gonna click on all functions, and we're just gonna click on add. So I've now added that 10 gigabit ethernet card. I'm gonna go add the second one, because I wanna have at least two for PFSense. I want one to be WAN, that's the internet coming in, and I want one to be the LAN, which is going out to my local area network. So I'm gonna go back to PCI, and I'm gonna drop this down, and I'm just gonna go find that second one gigabit uh, card right here, that one gigabit slot. I'm gonna click on it, and again, I'm gonna click on all functions, and then I'm gonna click on add. So now I've got these two PCI cards set up right here. That's what we're wanting. Now from here, we can start the virtual machine and actually get it running. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then I'll go and we'll do OpenSense and we'll do the exact same process, honestly. If you're following along and you already got OpenSense there, you're gonna go through the exact same process that we just went through for PFSense, except you're gonna pick the OpenSense ISO at step two. 
Okay, so to set up OpenSense as a virtual machine inside of your Proxmox box, we're gonna do the same exact process that we did for PFSense. We're just gonna either right click here and say create VM, or we can go over here and click on the button for create VM. It's kind of up to you how you do that. But if we click and we do create VM, we're gonna go through the same process. We're gonna give this a number that's not already been used. And then we're gonna give it a name that we can identify it with. So OpenSense should work fine. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna tell it where the image is for OpenSense. So you pick your images file. And we're gonna go down here to OpenSense right there. We're gonna click next. Here, we're just gonna leave the default graphics card, nothing there to change. And then here, we're gonna tell it where we want it to create this VM. So we'll do it on VMs. We're gonna give it 40 gigabytes. We're gonna hit next. Here, we're gonna do again four cores. I have, I have the headspace for four cores. You can do what you need to for whatever you're gonna to wanna to install. And then on the RAM, again, I'm gonna do 4096. I think you only need like 512 to run these things, but two gigs should be plenty. I'm gonna do four gigs just in case. A network, so you can check no network for now and then hit next, double check your settings, and then you're gonna click on finish. So just like before, I'm going in and setting up my network and I'm, I picked the 10 gigabit uh, network device this time so I don't have a conflict with the PFSense box that I just created, but make sure you go in again and, and if you're gonna do this, pick the network cards, uh, NICs that you want, and then set those up. The other thing I didn't show you on OpenSense or on PFSense but that you wanna do is you wanna to go to options, you want to go here where it says start at boot and you want to double click where it says no, check the box, click OK, and you'll see it turns to yes. Because you do want this to start at boot whenever you boot up your server, if you have to reboot it for some reason, because you won't have any, any local area network when you do that, unless you have redundancy with another server that's handling that job for you until this one comes back up. So you definitely want this to start up whenever the server starts. Now that we've got our virtual machine set up, we can just right click on the virtual machine and click on start. You can, you'll want to have the console highlighted here in the second panel, or you can click on start over here. We're just gonna click on start now. This is gonna start up our virtual machine and it should connect us to the console and we'll see the Proxmox logo. I'll go ahead and make this full screen and this is gonna start logging us in. Now here, you get some options, but it's gonna just auto start into the boot multi-user, which is what we really want. So option one there. If you don't do anything, it's just gonna start there. So just let that run. This is gonna do a bit of a startup process, so it may take a minute, be patient, but this should bring us to a wizard that'll run us through the installation of PFSense. Again, this is gonna be a very similar process for when we do OpenSense, so we'll get to that one here in a minute. Once you get to this screen, you want to check out the terms of service. Of course, if you're going to accept that, just go ahead and hit enter for accept. Next, we do want to install PFSense. If you have some other reason later to rerun this installer or this ISO, you can launch a shell so that if you're, if you're trying to do some kind of recovery, a rescue shell, you could do a, reco you know, a recover a config.xml. So basically, if anything happens, that's where those backups come into play. Again, we're doing this in a virtualized way so that we can have a full backup and just bring that back up if we need to. But for now, we're gonna choose install PFSense and hit OK. If you need to change your keyboard layout or your language for any reason, this is where you're gonna do that. So just arrow down until you find the one that you want. So we'd come down, let's just say we're gonna do Kazakh. We would highlight Kazakh and then hit select. In my case, I'm gonna go right back to the top. I just need to go with the default key map. So I'm just gonna do that. And then if you tab, you'll see it goes to cancel. If you tab again, it goes back to select. We're just gonna hit select. Now this part is really something for you to make a decision on and for you to understand how your system is set up. I'm gonna go with UFS BIOS, which is the guided disk setup. Um, you could do guided root on ZFS. If you understand ZFS really well and you wanna use ZFS for that, um, you could also go with guided disk setup using UEFI boot. It's kind of up to you how you're gonna set this up, but it also depends on how you have your VM set up. For me, I'm just gonna do BIOS and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay. So it's gonna basically unpack the stuff that it needs. It's gonna go over and grab some in, some information that it needs. So it's gonna go through this kind of install process here. Just give it a few minutes to let that run.
So once that's completed, it's going to tell you the installation is now finished and it says before exiting the installer, would you like to open a shell in the new system to make any final manual modifications? Right now we're just going to say no. Um, if you do want to do that, you could just tab to go to yes and hit enter and it would bring you to the shell so you can make changes. We're going to do no and then it's going to ask us to go ahead and reboot the system. And once we reboot the system, we should come up into our regular install of PFSense. But one thing we might want to do is actually shut down the system versus reboot. So you, you still have an option to get to the shell if you want to. Um, so we're going to reboot and I'm going to escape out of this full screen. And you'll see that it's going to shut down here very quickly. There we go. We want to go to our hardware list. So you'll see that we have two drives. We have our hard disk, which is where we just installed PFSense. And then we have our ISO DVD. So we just want to go ahead and click on that ISO DVD. We're going to click on remove and then just say yes. So we remove the DVD. Now we can start PFSense again. And again, you get this similar selection menu. Again, it starts on its own. It'll always go into multi-user unless you tell it to do something different whenever it starts up like that. But let it run through the startup. And again, I'll bring this up full screen. All right, so you can see that my LAN has gotten 192.168.1.1. My WAN does not have a cable connected, so your LAN always is going to land on this 1.1 if everything is set up correctly. You can change this whenever you're ready. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the correct output ports set for your WAN and your LAN. So I've got IGB0 and IGB1 set for my WAN and for my LAN. So I can go to my actual hardware and plug in a cable and see if that comes up on my WAN with an IP address. All right, I've plugged in my cable. I'm gonna to try to get this view to refresh. I don't see anything for IGB zero yet. Let's go to one. So we can see here, we've got the, we've got the bridge and then we've got IGB zero. Uh, we don't wanna set up VLANs right now, so that's what it's asking about. We will wanna set up VLANs eventually, but for now we're gonna say no. So I'm gonna leave our WAN on IGB zero for now. and our LAN on IGB1, and then I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna say yes, I'm just gonna see if it pulls an IP address for this thing after it reconfigures it. So it did not pull an IP address, so we have kind of two options. I can go physically switch the wire and see if that makes a difference to see if it's in a different port, or I can switch which cable or which port is set up as the WAN and the LAN here in the interface. It's kind of up to you how you do that, but you'd go through the same process. You would hit one, you would hit no for VLAN right now, and then we would put IGB1 as our WAN and IGB0 as our LAN, and then hit enter again, and then say yes, I want to proceed. So this is just switching it through the software. We'll see if that gets it. I've got four ports. I could be using just the wrong port completely, but I think I'm on one of the right ones. There we go. So yes, I switched it and I just had my ports uh, backwards. So yeah, I've got my WAN set now. So this is my home IP address uh, range. So I know that I'm on the right port and now this is handing out 1.1. The way my home is set up, I don't have the ability to, to connect my modem directly to the back of my box here in the office, uh, my server, but I can see that I am pulling the address, which is good. That's what I want. And this is the address that we're assigning out. Now I can go to the web interface and configure my IP address for my LAN if I want to, but I can also do it here. So I want to go through that for you guys as well. And this is the same process for OpenSense, just so you know. So we're going to do two. We're going to set interface IP address and we're going to set our LAN. So we're going to enter two again. And now we're going to enter the new IPv4 address. So if I wanted to go with uh, 10.100.0.1, I can press enter. And it wants to know the subnet masks uh, enters as bit counts, so as in the CIDR notation. So we're going to do 24 because we want these three, this is the subnet mask that we're looking for. Now, if you want to do something a little bit bigger on your network, you can absolutely do a 16. You get into a little bit more complex networking whenever you do this. But for now, if we just say again, it's it's me, 
two other people and some services we're going to run. This should give us plenty of space and plenty of headroom to grow a little before we have to switch out our networking at some later point. So I'm going to say 24 for now. And then it says for WAN, enter the new LAN IPv4 upstream gateway address. Uh, for a LAN, press enter for none. So basically, we're setting the LAN. This is really going to be our upstream gateway, so we don't need to set an upstream gateway address. That's why it says if this is if this is for your LAN, just print it, press enter. Now, if you're going to do IPv6, you are welcome to set this up. I am not an IPv6 expert. I do understand a little bit about how IPv6 is intended to work. So right now, I'm just going to leave this alone. I'm just going to press enter. And then do we want to enable DHCP server on the LAN? Yes, we do. Um, a lot of times you want to have static addresses for a lot of things, but you want to leave a little bit of room for some DHCP just because it makes things simpler sometimes, especially when you're first starting out. So we're going to say yes. And it's going to ask us, what do we want for the start address? in the client address range. So we're going to do 10.100.0.50. And then we're going to do 10.100.0.100. That'll give us 50 addresses, or I think 50, yeah, 51 addresses, um, basically for DHCP. And this is basically from our start to our end range. And then we have all the rest of that for static addresses if we want to set those up. And it says, do you want to revert to HTTP as the web? No, we want to use HTTPS for sure. So don't, so always hit no on this question. It's going to reset some things and it looks like everything took. So we're just going to hit enter. And you can see now instead of 192.168.1.1, we've got 10.100.0.1. As long as you fall in a private IP range for your LAN, you're fine. So just just realize that you need to, to make sure you have this set up correctly, but this is pulling an address from my from my uh, local network, which means my WAN is cr is working correctly. It's it's doing what I expect. If it was connected to my um, modem, it would pull an address from my ISP. That's what I want. Okay, I plugged in a cable to my system and I got an IP address, so I am now 10.100.0.50 on my wired connection. And then I went to the 10.100.0.1 address and basically had to go through the prompt of a, of a non-certified certificate. So when you get to that, you do have to go through that. And then you'll log in with admin as the username and pfSense all lowercase as the password. And when you come here, it's going to tell you, hey, your pfSense password is, is, needs to be changed because the admin password is not secure. So go ahead and click here. It's going to bring you to the page where you're going to change the password. And right here, you can put in a more strong password. And we should be set. And it says, let's see, um, if you decide to purchase a NetGate. So they give you a little bit of information here. But down here, you can see that we've got our WAN and it's in an upstate. And we can check out our dashboard later. But there we go. We've got PSSense basically up and running. That's great. Uh, now we just need to get our OpenSense system set up. All right, we've set up our OpenSense the same way as we had our PFSense set up. So I'm just gonna click on Start. And again, we'll just go full screen here. And then notice it's very much similar menu. It's just gonna say OpenSense instead of PFSense. And again, it's gonna kick into number one automatically unless you stop it and tell it to do something different. So just let it run. It's gonna go out and try to find all the things that it needs as far as cables, connections, things like that. Just, just like on PFSense, it's gonna run through some startup stuff. And then we'll get into the actual installation wizard. So the difference between PFSense and OpenSense is that it kind of runs through a setup that it, you can run it off of the ISO. Um, so if you look here, it's already got, uh, it's, it picked these things as the LAN, 192.168.1.1, and it picked the WAN because it was able to detect a signal and already set it. So it's actually got them set correctly, IGB0, IGB1. But we want to install this. We don't want to be running it off of a live ISO all the time. We want to have it installed so that we can make changes and those changes are kept and, and so on. So whenever you do an OpenSense installation, you need to set it to, you basically need to log in as the installer user. And so there's a special login for that that basically tells it when you log in as that user to start the installation. So if you look here, it says you can log in as root to continue in live mode. So that's what we're in now. Or you can log in as installer to start the installation. So that's what we want to do. So we want to do installer. And then the password, I believe, is just O-P-N-S-E-N-S-E. -E. Yes. So you're just going to use installer as the username and then O-P-N-S-E-N-S-E, -E, OpenSense, as the password. It's O-P-N, not O-P-E-N. 
So it detected my keyboard as US. This is the same exact thing as we had on PF Sense. So if your if your keyboard is detected correctly, hit enter. If not, move down and then make sure that you get the right one and then hit enter. Again, the installation is kind of up to you. You can do UFS, ZFS, extended, local config. It just kind of depends, or load configuration file. It kind of depends. I'm just going to do the UFS, GPT, UEFI hybrid is fine. Um, it's not something where I really have to have anything uh, ZFS wise. So I'm just going to hit enter. And now this is going to ask you which drive is your hard drive that you want to install on. So if you're using like a 32 gig USB stick to put this on a, a different piece of physical hardware, then I would suggest try to find a USB stick that's a different size from your internal hard drive so you can easily tell. So in this case, it shows one gig, which is our DVD-ROM, and it tells you it's DVD-ROM. Sometimes it doesn't tell you. Sometimes it says hard disk, hard disk, if you're using a USB drive. So just, just know that if, it, if it's not easy for you to tell, try to use the size of the drive over here to help. So in my case, I made it a 40 gig drive, so that's, that's what I want to use for my installation media. So I'm going to select that one and hit OK. It says continue with a recommended swap partition size of 8 gigs. Yeah, that's fine. And then it says last chance. Are you sure you want to destroy the current contents? So this is going to destroy whatever drive you're about to put it on. So make sure and then use the left arrow to move over to yes or tab and then hit enter. And it's basically going to go through the same thing as you saw with PF Sense, where it's going to extract some stuff. It's going to do some installations and then it'll come up and it'll be ready. So it says setup of your open system is nearly complete and they have the root password change here. So instead of going into the web GUI, you would do it here. So we're just going to say change root password. We're going to go ahead and say, uh, yeah, let's do that. And we'll type in whatever we want for our root password. So make a nice, long, strong password. And then you're going to retype it. Make sure it's the same both times. And once you're done, you can arrow down to complete the install and that'll exit and reboot and then press enter and it should reboot the system. Now again, once it does the reboot, you want to stop it here real quick if it's a, if it's a virtual machine. Um, otherwise, just pull your physical media uh, real quick in between the reboot. Once it powers down, you just want to go to your hardware tab, find that CD ISO, and just do remove, confirm it, and then you can go right back to your console and start it back up. So it's going to boot from the hard disk. That's what we want. Again, you can just let it go into the multi-user. That's what we want. So again, a little difference from PFSense. PFSense just loads right up to the menu on the attached monitor. You're not really expected to run it with an attached monitor. You're expected to run it headless, but a little extra security here is nice. So you do have to log in. So if you ever start typing, you don't see it typing in the window or if this thing minimizes again, you need to click on the window just to get it active. And then you can enter your password. And now we've got basically the same options that we had in PFSense. So we can do our interface assignments, but you can see that our interface assignments are already good. But if we need to change our assignments, we can do it the same way we did by using number one and going in and telling it which interfaces should be what. Um, the interface IP address stuff, again, we can, we can change that. So let's do that. Let's do number two. And then we're going to do the interface, which is the LAN. That's number one. And it says configure IPv4 address LAN interface via DHCP. No, we want to make it a static address. And we want to give this one. So the last one we did was 10.100.0. So I'm going to do 10.100.10.1. And then again, we're going to give it the 24. We want this, this top one. If you, if you really know what you're doing, you want to set a little bit bigger thing, you could do a 16. But for now, we're going to do 24 because, again, we're, we're considering ourselves starting out as a small business. So again, if, if this was going to be something where we're setting up the WAN, we would enter the LAN IPv4 upstream, but we don't need to do that. We're just going to go ahead and hit enter here because it's the LAN. And configure IPv6, again, um, via WAN tracking, you can say yes or no. Oh, we could say yes. I don't know. And do you want to enable DHCP, DHCP server on the LAN? Yes, we do. And then we're going to set up our range again. So we're going to do 10.100.10.10. 50. And remember, you want to use the same IP range that you set up here. Now, if you're doing this, you shouldn't be doing both. Don't do PFSense and OpenSense for now. You should be picking one. I'm just showing you that it's almost the same process no matter which one you choose. 
and then we're going to do 10.100.10.100, which gives us 50 or 51 uh, DHCP addresses. And do we want to change that to HTTP uh, from HTTPS? No, we want to leave it HTTPS. And we don't need a new certificate. That's fine. They're, they're self-signed no matter what you do. And then restore the web GUI access defaults. No, we'll just keep it the way it is. It's going to reset up our interfaces and we should be back at this menu. So if you want to reset your root password, you can do that from here. You can reset this thing to factory defaults. If you mess something up, you can always come here and use number four to reset to factory defaults and just try to start your configuration again. So you've got room to make errors without having to just completely reinstall the system. Again, five powers off the system, six will reboot the system. So, so for some reason you can't reach the web UI and you need to reboot the system to see if that fixes it, six, okay? Um, you can ping a host with seven. You can get to the shell with eight, which is a little bit different than what we're doing here. This is a, an interactive prompt setup here. If you want to get to the main shell, you can use number eight and get to the shell and use commands. If you want to do PF top from nine, you can. If you want to do the firewall log, you can from 10 and, and so on. So you've got all these options of things that you can do here in the CLI if you need to. So if you ever need to connect a monitor and a keyboard to your system, you can. It's not really something you should have to do, but in, in this case, we're running on Proxmox. The, the nice thing is we've got this ability to kind of get to this uh, setup without having to really mess with doing all of the other things that go along with really trying to get get to a, a head on a headless system. So we can just come into this console and really kind of get to it. We should be able to open up the browser and go to 10.100.10.1. And we're gonna get this warning again about the certificate. So just uh, whatever browser you use, use the method to get through this and then accept it. And here, uh, instead of PFSense, you use admin as the login. Here you use root and the password that you created. And the interface just looks a little bit different. So you'll see that the starting in the initial configuration, you know, welcome to OpenSense. And again, they want to run us through a wizard. That's fine. Um, we didn't go through the one on PFSense because we went and changed the user password and added a new user. They have a few things they want to ask you, but PFSense has the wizard as well. So don't, don't think that it doesn't. So setting up your domain, setting up the host name, you know, everything like that, you can do those things. It's important to kind of do those things. So thinking of what your business is going to be and what you're going to call yourself could help you come up with what you want your domain to be. Um, so if you want to call this open sense, you can, if you want to call it firewall, you can, that's fine. Um, here on the domain, we might want to call this, um, let's just call this tech, tech consult loc. You shouldn't use local. This is a windows type domain. Um, you could use like home if you want to. Things like that that aren't normal outside domains are probably better than using, you don't want to use net unless you actually own this domain. So, you know, you could use something like loc, I think is fine. Um, English is my language. If, if it's not your language or you're not your primary language, you can change the language here. Your primary DNS server, in my case, is just gonna be um, some servers on my regular LAN. So I can do that, 214 and 192.168.10.211. For you, you would want to use whatever you're, you're going to have, but in my case, I've got some pie holes set up that, that would be the great DNS uh, setting here. Um, override DNS, so allow DNS servers to be overridden by DHCP, PPP, or WAN. No, I don't want that. Now, if you don't mind your, your wide area network telling you what the DHCP server should be, you can leave that checked, it's fine. It's kind of up to you how you set that up. If you have unbound DNS, you can set that up as well. So we're just going to hit next. So this is talking about your time servers, really nothing here for me to change except for my time zone. So I want to go to America and I'm in America slash Chicago. So that's what I'm looking for. Should be close past it right there. And then we'll do next. Make sure you set your time zone correctly. Finally, IPv4 configuration type, DHCP. We've already kind of set this up. There's really nothing for us to change in this case. So we can just kind of move through this and just hit next. And then here's our LAN IP address. We already set that. We can just go to next. So we did a lot of this stuff in the command line so that makes it a little bit easier to run through this. Again, root password we've already changed. We're good. And now we're just gonna re reload it. So it's gonna reload everything in the background, all of our configurations and our setup wizard reload is in progress. So now we can click on our dashboard 
and we're going to see a very similar dashboard as to what we get with PFSense. So I'm going to zoom this back out a little bit. You guys will be able to see what's going on here. Um, so you get a lot of a lot of very similar information. And again, you can see your LAN and your WAN, and, and you can reconfigure this dashboard. I've gone over this in other videos. This is not something that's really pertinent to what we need to do today. But right now, as this sits with the setup that we've done, we've got a firewall that we can use to connect to our modem and get our incoming information from our ISP and connect out to our network and we can start actually adding devices and we can start adding things like that that, that we want to have on our network and we can start actually doing some stuff with our applications that we want to set up to support our business. So we've really gone a long way here, even though it may not seem like that. You're, you're actually set already. Now, there's other things that we're going to want to do with our networking at some point. We're going to want to set up a VPN for sure. We want to set up a VPN, if not a couple of VPNs. We want to set up VLANs and set up kind of different, I guess the best thing to say would be different zones in our VLANs that do different tasks and kind of keep our, our stuff separated a bit. So we'll, we'll go through that. And then we're going to want to set up some things like uh, monitoring to make sure our network's healthy, make sure we're keeping an eye on what's going on here. And then you're going to want to set up access points and wireless access points at some point because you're going to have people coming in who have wireless devices that they want to use. And today we don't have a wireless access point set up because we're using this through Proxmox and Proxmox, my Proxmox at least, does not have a wireless radio. So we'll go through those things. We'll build this out. We'll build out our network as we're building out our business. And we'll continue with this. I hope this was useful for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it from both of our channels. Next week, we'll be looking at some more topics that build on what we've already done. And slowly but surely, we're getting to a point where we can have a base infrastructure that can really be easy to scale out. And that's the idea. And hopefully, we can stay on that path so that we can show you guys how you can grow from something small to something big really easily without having to redo all the work you've already done. If you like what we're doing, please don't forget to like and subscribe on both of our channels. We would really appreciate it. Every little thing you guys do really helps our channels out and makes a world of difference. So thank you very much for taking the time to do that. We really appreciate it. And we can't wait to see you in the next IbraCorp and awesome open source video.